Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm Paul Dutopanis. I work in I, IBM Dublin Research Lab. So basically we have like 10 labs all uh, scattered all over the world. Some are doing uh, research in blockchain, quantum computing. Uh, Dublin Research Lab is focuses more on healthcare and uh, industry solutions. And I'm working on uh, IoT and building insights and so on. So if, I think, uh, I don't know, in this building, for example, I, uh, you might be surprised how many sensors are here. Maybe some of them are listening to you, to us. So I would like to acknowledge my collaborators, Joran Plonings and Niall Brady, some of them. And Niall is more on the domain experts for the buildings. And me and Joran are in the machine learning. So let's start with the motivations. So we are, we are seeing a, a increasing trend of automations in the industry. And basically, because of these automations, it requires uh, uh, installations of sensors. And with these thousands of sensors or hundreds of sensors, you have these main challenges of collecting large volume of data, detecting anomalies, monitoring the status of your equipment, discover patterns, and you know the drill, so please read it. Um, so what is TSML? So basically, uh, TSML is a very specific package to do machine learning, particularly in time series sensors. Why we do this? Because uh, we are uh, in the IoT or Internet of Things, and the idea is that we develop things that can be highly scalable and fast and so on. And I think Julia is one of uh, a, a good programming language that can do these kind of things. So in order to show how the package works, I'd like to start with some, uh, I think it's better to show you some demonstration. And again, I'm crossing fingers. <laughs> Uh, by the way, this TSML has certain kind of parallelism with the MLJ, and I think you will see this in the pipeline workflow. So let's create, start with creating missing data, a, 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 a typical uh, time series data. So in, in my uh, domain, we just have a very simple data set. You have a, ray, a column of dates and value, and this value can, can be f coming from weather data, from humidity data, temperature data, uh, sound data, and so on, or biometric data. So let's load the, these are some of the important, uh, for example, filters and transformers that we will be using. So the first filter that I'd like to, uh, 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 sorry, the first filter that I'd like to show is the plotter filter, which is a wrapper of the plots. So basically this plotter, this is an example of the TSML workflow is very simple. You have you you instantiate the transformer like the plotter, then you create a pipeline. So the, in the in this example, is only one pipeline, but you can have series of of filters in that pipeline, and then you do the fit and transform. So if you want to extend this functionality, you just create your data type and redefine fit and transform, and you can add it in the pipeline. So for example, here with the with the help of the interact uh, interact package, you will see that the missing data is, uh, it shows you discontinuity, which I think is a, it's a nice idea to visualize how good or bad is your data. We are very, very, uh, very serious about data quality because at the end of the pipeline, your learner will not perform very well if the data quality is bad. So I have a filter for data quality, we, ca we call it Statifier. So the Statifier, if you place it in this uh, filter, it gives you some statistical features, but the most important are the blocks of missing data. Those keywords that starts with letter B tells you how this continuous blocks, uh, the, the mean, the median, the quartile, and it tells you the data quality that you have, which is very important later when you do uh, machine learning. I have another pipeline for aggregation, imputations, and plotting. Uh, so you have now Valgator is basically an aggregator of values. I'm using a hourly aggregation. And if you apply this aggregation, usually you listen the missing data. In my example, the artificial data, actually all the missing data is gone. So basically you'll see here that you have no more missing data if you zoom in. So I think uh, 
we are now ready to try real data. So cursing finger. So let's load some um, real data. So I have now different filters. I have another filter that I created for CSV reading. I tell you this CS uh, these filters are just three liners of code or five liners of code. Yeah, in the tradition of Unix where you keep it simple and make sure that every filter does one function and does it very well. Okay, so, so you'll notice this now that yeah, in the pipeline I have a CSV reader, aggregated, and then plot. And you will see here that in the aggregation, you still have uh, actually missing data. You will see breaks there. This is a terrible data because the sensor is very noisy. So a lot of times you don't get uh, a good data. Now let's do the statistics of this. You will notice here that, for example, the blocks of missing data is huge. Like this is like 10 hours of continuous missing data in the average case. So you might decide maybe to get rid of this data anyway. So let's do the aggregation and the stat uh, uh, let's let's see the plotting. So let me change the plotter. And crossing finger, let's see if this aggregation works. So if you look at now, there's no more missing data. Or is there? No, because I have already imputer. The val puter is basically your imputer. If I remove this and see again, then you will see that uh, the missing data is there. So what I like with this uh, pipeline idea is that you can play with the different things and see immediately the result. And if you're not happy, plug your pipeline, uh, your filters. Okay, so I think I'm in the end. So let me show you an example of doing the pipeline and doing classification with scikit-learn, current uh, data um, models, and Julia. And they have like super ensembles with it, with which combine scikit learn and and Carrot at the same time doing this pipeline and doing the machine learning tasks. So let's do that. Let's run the program. So you will have now doing this in parallel. Who do you think is the winner? Is it scikit learn, Carrot, or Julia? So in this example, scikit learn extra tree is the winner. And carry tree bug is the second one, and then SVM linear is the third. So basically, what I'm showing here is that you can basically liberate scikit learn, carrot, combine them in an ensemble, run them in parallel. And this is a, a good example of Julia in a stable case because before, when I was developing this package, it's always breaking down. So now it's very stable. Thank you. Feel free to ask any questions. So I have one question. So how many filters like you have created? Like uh, I've just shown you a subset of filters, but you basically the idea here in our lab is that if you do, if you're if you have certain kind of uh, specializations in your in your field, for example, some of us are doing uh, signal processing. So they specialize that filter, and we can use it uh, in the in the in the pipeline. So basically, the main idea of this uh, of this package is is a building blocks of of filters and so on. So if you're not happy, it's just very easy to add your filters without knowing much of the other implementation. Yes. Okay. So let's thank Polito and end our session here.